Hi, good evening. Uh, we are your Taking Care of Your Mental Health group. And today we are highlighting small businesses. So we have a couple of very special Hi, guests with us. I do it every time, just a minute. Care of your mental health group. <laughs> All right, there we go. So <laughs> back to real business. I always forget to close out my Facebook once it pops open. But thank you guys for your grace and your patience with me as we um, you know, start our conversations with small businesses. So today we have a couple of very, very special guests with us. Uh, we will introduce them and allow them to tell their stories. Um, in the Taking Care of Our Mental Health group, we love to support small businesses. We love to support people who are doing things, who are shakers and movers in the world, who are making impacts in people's lives, you know, because it's their calling, it's their passion, it's their purpose. We want to do everything that we can to make, you know, what we're responsible in the world, that part of it, a better place. So today, our first guest is going to be uh, Lucette Floyd. So I'm going to pass it over to Lucette and I'm going to allow her to share about her um, business. She's a RN and she does some home, home care. So Lucette, I am going to turn the floor over to you and give us what you got. Thank you so much for that introduction, Camille. Um, I'm honored to be here today to speak with you all. Um, so my name is Lucette Floyd Zudney. I'm actually married, I didn't put my married name there, but um, I am 36 years young. I am a mother of two boys. I'm married um, for the last 10 years now. And um, I'm a registered nurse. Um, and I've been a registered nurse for about 15 years. Um, I started very young in the uh, medical field, right out of high school. I was able, I was given that opportunity to do it um, and I ran with it. Um, so recently within the last year, I decided to uh, step away from the bedside. Um, I, you know, worked during the pandemic, you know, didn't stop working during the pandemic. I worked more than I ever worked <laughs> before in my entire career. Um, so after the pandemic, I realized things started to shift, uh, uh, you know, just the business of the industry started to shift. Um, and also I just wanted something different. I wanted to be able to, um, have more time with my patients. So I created a nursing service. It's, um, it's a niche service. It's like concierge nursing. Um, and what, what we do is when I say we, because there are other nurses I work with myself. So what we do is we provide post um, operative care uh, to patients because you know everyone doesn't have insurance everyone doesn't have insurance and if they do sometimes um, you know insurance it just takes a while to get a nurse in the home after uh, surgeries um, by the time everything is authorized um, they may not need a nurse anymore so I created a concept where um, you can have a nurse you know maybe in the most critical hours of you returning home um, from anywhere from 24 hours to about 72 hours. And um, also I, I do help people with care navigation. You know, there's people that um, they're, you know, they may be diagnosed with something new. Uh, they don't know which doctors to go to. Uh, so they can call me and I can help them navigate that all because I am I'm privileged to a lot of what goes on in the medical field um, um, and I know you know what types of doctors are for what um, you know conditions and, and many you know people don't know that you know uh, so and it, and it could be a very frustrating process so I uh, you know that's what I assist them with and um, it's so far, it's been, it's been very good. It's been very rewarding because um, I can, you know, I directly speak with my patients. I'm in communication with my patients all the time. Um, I'm also in communication with the doctors. So um, I, I just feel like I'm giving back a little bit more uh, to them because working in the, the hospital, which I love, uh, I love it. I, I mean, I'll still do it every now and then, but um, it's so fast paced that like everyone is in and out, in and out, in and out. You really don't get to spend much time. And a lot of the times I noticed, like, you know, even when I had patients in the hospital, a lot of times in that vulnerable state that they're in, they want to talk, <laughs> you know, sometimes they forget about why they've been there. They just want to talk. They want to share their story. Um, and 
also, you know, just just to, just talk to someone because especially after, you know, the with the pandemic, families were not allowed in the hospital, you know, to stay with their um their family members. So it was the nurses, you know. But now, um, post pandemic, you know, the stays are um shorter. And, you know, people want to come home, but they're afraid. They're afraid to come home. As, and a lot of people are by themselves. Not everyone has family or support. You know, I've met a lot of patients that, um, you know, they have friends that come in and pick them up or, or someone that lives in their building. And, you know, sometimes it's a little scary. It could be scary for them. So um, I just... I just realized that I could be that person there for them. You know, they'll feel more confident because I'm a nurse um, and I'm very skillful um, at what I do. So, you know, that is why I created my company and it's been very rewarding since I have. Awesome. That That's really, really uh, very important. You know, a lot of patients, they... You, you get sick, you don't know what's going on with your body. You have a lot of doctors and nurses coming in and, you know, they also have a lot of other patients. And especially in this time of this pandemic where hospitals are overcrowded, they don't necessarily get the one-on-one -on -one to answer all the questions that they may have or just to really kind of express some of the fears or concerns that they might be experiencing, you know. So I have a question. I'm going to go back a little bit. I know that you've been in the field for about 15 years. But what was it that drew you to the RN profession, you know, specifically? Well, um, in the nursing field, I was 18 years old, or not even 18. I was younger than that when I was exposed to um, just nurses in general. Like I, my mom had friends as nurses. I had neighbors that were nurses. Like, you know, that was a thing a long, long time ago when everyone was in the, you know, trying to get in the medical field. So I've always, um, I just seen that, they were able to, to, to live their life and, and also give back, you know, to also take care of people. And it was just interesting to me. And I, I thought to myself, like, well, this is something that I can do right out of high school. Um, you know, not to knock any other uh, industries, but I, my mom would try to make me go work at McDonald's and everywhere else. I didn't want to work there. I just felt like I wanted to do something more that I can to, to serve a more better purpose for me, you know, that was for me. So um, I started very young. I was given an opportunity in high school um, and it was tough because, you know, I'm in high school. I had a lot of other, uh, you know, activities going on. I was running track. I was on, on different club and activities in school. And then just to really um, ha have to be disciplined to do something like this at 17 years old to go through this rigorous course. Um, but I, I realized like, okay, this was give this is a privilege is giving to me. So, you know, let me, let me try. First, it was just like, let me try, like, let me try to do something. It'll give me a job at the end of my high school career, you know? Um, and then, you know, and then I started to see like, wow, this is, this is something that I really love. I love helping people and I love talking to people and, just seeing them, you know, in, in this vulnerable state and then, you know, progressing to get better. Um, and that's what I liked. And that's what intrigued me about nursing. And then when I found out that there's so much different avenues of nursing, you know, you can teach, you know, uh, you could do ad administration, you could run a business. Like when I found that out, I was like, oh, okay, this, I can do this. This is what I like to do. It gave me options. It gave me options, um, but, the, but caring for people was number one. Um, cause it gave me purpose. It gave me purpose. So, um, that's what intrigued me. And then I was so young and I, you know, but now I, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the, to the industry of nursing. So, so I have, I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Mac, Mac. I have a question. So what made you shift to want to be on your own? Because I find that a lot of people, they work at a place for a long time, but they don't shift to, to be, to be the owner of their own. What right. made you say, okay, I'm going to shift from leaving from something for 15 years, now that I'm going to now do this on my own because I'm ready and capable of doing because some people don't know how to shift right. and be on your own, how to go through that process because I'm very sure that process was not, not easy because you right. have to like go something, you have to sacrifice something, you have to maybe lose some money. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you lost money while trying to shift. So. How did you go about shifting in that in that area, especially when you have two kids, you have right. a husband at home, you gotta make sure the home is taken care of, but now do business on your own 
and and raise a family. Right. So um, that's a good question. Thank you. So um, what made me shift was the whole the just the pandemic the pandemic really made me shift and i i realized that i wanted to be um a little bit more active in my children's lives um and also that i was aware that nursing had many options like the hospital you know a lot of nurses um believe that the hospital is the end all be all and it's not they feel like if they don't work in a hospital that they're not doing nursing and i mm. um i'm always educating myself first of all like i was always i'm always personally developing myself Stuff. I'm always reading books. I'm always listening to audio books. So it gave me the courage and the confidence to know that this is what I can do. But I, of course I had to have a plan. Like I didn't like totally like get out. So I had to like, okay, from full-time to like part-time to like per diem, um, you know, and then kind of exit my way out. Um, and I'm still not fully all the way out because I still, you know, have like do like a little per diem here and there because I'm very new in business. Um, and I, you know, but it's just that I had to really get my mind together to know that, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And then just create a plan and, 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 you know, and just create a plan out. I didn't just do it cold turkey, you know, cause I know I have my family, um, to, um, you know, I have my family. So yeah, I just had to create a plan. And then my mind, my mind had to have the right mindset, um, and know that I'm going, you know, I'm going to, this is the direction I want to go. And just like, you know, anything like school, you plan, okay, I want to go to college. I want to do this. I just had to plan this um, and, and just educate myself and, and just know how to just make those steps. I have another question for you. So I hear you talking about, you know, your patients calling you. So is this a one person business? And right now, if it is, how do you manage all of your different patients? And do you have plans for the future to maybe take on some additional nurses and expand your concierge, you know, nursing service to others? The last other part of that is, um, I know you said that it's a, you know, kind of a, a different type of nursing, but what type of services aside from just kind of the bedside thing being there within the first 24 to 72 hours or talking through things, what other services do you provide? Because I know you do provide some more. So can you share, talk to us a little bit about that? And so, so yes. So uh, to answer your question about the, yes, this is a, it's a one woman show for now, um, only because I believe that um, a true well, for me in a service, like this is a service-based business. And I want to know everything that's going on in my business from A to Z. So the best way to know that is for me to do it myself, right? When I, I feel like that those tasks are becoming overwhelming, then I would now have to delegate those tasks, right? But for now I can't control it. Um, I can't control it, um, which is good because I'm learning, I'm, I'm still in, I'm learning like, okay, this is working, this doesn't work, this works. So um, when I did, when, when I start seeing growth then I'm like, okay, I'm going to now hire people. As far as hiring other nurses, I've done, I've, I've, I've already done so, um, not hiring like um, their payroll, like uh, independent contracting. And just, nurses are always looking for something extra to do. So I've been in situations where I was unable to, um, you know, to, to commit to a, a client. So I had to now, at, you know, reach out to one of my nurse friends or nurse colleagues that I know that like to do, uh, you know, what they call it, like little side hustles. So then I, you know, ask them to come on with me. Um, but yes, I know in the future, I'm going to build it even bigger, but for now it's because I'm learning, you know, I'm learning and I'm always, um, I'm always learning. I'm reaching out to people that are in business in, in a similar business to mine. Um, so I'm learning, um, as far as the other services, um, what well, is the care navigation is a post-op care. Um, I am now, um, implementing like, um, IV hydration, um, but Due to the state, New York State we live in, is a lot of rules and regulations. So I have to get proper, I have to get the proper people in place, like medical directors, like doctors, and things like that, in order for me to conduct those services. So yes, so for now that's what I'm doing. But as as like I accomplish one service, I'm like, okay, I got this in order. Then I'll move on to the next service, you know, because again, I don't want to overwhelm myself now because it's beginning. I'm still learning. But um, with the services that I have now, I'm doing pretty well with those services, but I, I do hope to advance more. I'm trying to figure out different ways I can, uh, you know, to give back, you know, if I can't physically be to give back, I could try to, I'm trying to think of different things, um, you know, to do. 
I like what you said about that focus. I'm going to master one thing first before I move on to another one. So you can be a master of one thing or two or whatever, instead of jack of all trades and master none. <laughs> right. <a> master of <laughs> none. <laughs> yeah, you literally have people's lives in your hands, yes. you know, so you have to be very, very competent yes. in that area of service that you're providing for them. And so um, I want to say thank you. But before I let you go, I have one more thing for you. What would you say to maybe some young folks that are looking into going into nursing and they have the option in school, or maybe that nurse that's wanting to step out on her own or his own to create the business, you know, what words of advice would you give to them? Maybe some words of encouragement if they're trying and things are kind of, you know, they're, they're facing some obstacles and challenges. Um, what words can you give them? to help them, to encourage them, and then let us know where you can be found. Okay, so uh, within uh, nursing, because nursing uh, is, is, is in a medical field, so um, school is needed, school is necessary, especially in the, the, at the foundation, in the beginning. So I know a lot of people now, the thing to do, everyone wants to start a business, and I'm for that, I'm so for that, but there's certain industries where you still have to go to school. Okay, you still have to get your basic, <laughs> education and um i just you know my um my advice is to to do that take those steps take those steps but know that whatever after you get that degree you have to really hone in on okay what is exact what is it exactly that i have to do okay and you could there these days where digital everything is technology you can you have many much more resources than you know maybe years ago so you can find people within your industry you can find people doing exactly what you want to do and don't be afraid to go and to to connect with them don't be afraid to tap into stuff like um you know like groups or masterminds or things like that that, that can help you advance and let me tell you, one of the things that you have to do, and, and I didn't realize I was doing it, 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 it like forever, like since I was 17, I was always feeding my mind. Like it had nothing to do with nursing. It just had to do with changing your mindset and just seeing things from a different perspective. You have to be open to, to, to different things. And um, I, I person, personal development and just knowing what you want to do and after you receive that degree, um, you know, you, you can do whatever, you know, with it. <laughs> you can take that degree and turn it into whatever, you know, you want, you know? So that's what I did. I just leveraged it, my degree. <laughs> As a woman after my own heart, I'm constantly, you know, like you said, mastermind groups, surrounding yourself with people who are in places where you want to be or who are, you know, have the mindset that you, you are trying to develop uh, is so important. And that's not just you know, if I want to be a profession, that's just in life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. That's in life. And I tell you, once you go on that journey, the things that you become aware of, the things that, you know, you now notice and, oh, what? I have the ability to change my mind, <laughs> you know, which can change my life is like mind yeah. blowing. So, um, does anybody, let me say this too, if you guys are watching out there and you have any questions or anything that you would like to ask the panelists, the guest today, please put it in the uh, comment section. We are reading the comment section and we will definitely address your questions. And even if you know we move on to the next person and you still have a question, please put it there. We'll come back to it at the end. Yep, so um, thank you so much, Lucy. Oh, I forgot to oh, say where they can find me. I forgot to say oh, that. Yes, well, um, you know, social media and stuff is something that I'm really like now getting into, but I'm on Instagram. My name is you love Lucy RN, and my uh, business is called RN Confidential. Okay, um, I put don't know it, if in the, on the chat, put it, put it in the chat and also the on the page. I think, um, okay, well, I think the mail put it in on the the page so we have it on the page too yeah well, i made sure i put it on the page as well okay thank you thank you exactly. so much Awesome. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing. You. I, I, you know, I just pray that God continues to bless you as you continue mm -hmm. to help and serve others. Um, and again, if you guys want to contact her, you love Lucy RN on IG and then also uh, RN dash confidential.com. Uh, you can find her and her services if you're in the New York area and you know somebody who has need of what she can provide, 
please, please, please give them her contact information, go to that website, book a service, whatever it is that you need to do so that we can support each other. You know, we want, yeah. we want all of us to go, go higher, go different places, you know. And all about make millions and way. billions. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew and his millions, trillions, and billions. Oh, millions, billions, yeah. trillions. In my church, in my church. Yeah. I like that. I really, I need one of those. I need that. I need that shirt. <laughs> That's a growth I'll tell you, mindset. I'll tell you what right I'll <laughs> yes. But we thank you again, thank Luca. You. Thank Appreciate you for having me. Time. And so now, uh, Matthew, I'm going to turn it over to you to introduce our next guest. Sure, sure. And please, share this. please share this. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon. Right now we have David Coates. Um, I'll give you a backstory to how I got to know David Coates. Um, me and David are in a in a class called um, Optonomic class, basically in the trading class in the um, stock market. And I noticed during the class that he was in a wheelchair. I said, oh, is he in a wheelchair? I said, okay, I need to, I need to um, go on Facebook and find his name. So I reached out to his name and I was like, wow. Just reading his story and all that he has endured, I felt it was it was necessary that we have him come on and share his um his whole story of his journey and what he's doing and all that God is doing in his life. So, David Cooks, you're on, and I had to 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 get his book. So I've been reading, been reading, brother. I'm enjoying it. Fantastic. Enjoying so the book. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Matthew and Camille. Let me, before, I don't know how long Lucette has, but let me just give a quick testimony. Sure. Uh, in November of 2019, I had just got through giving a speech and I wasn't feeling great. So I went to the emergency room and uh, I told my wife, I said, hey, we need to go because I'm not shaking this fever thing. Well, it turned out I had sepsis. And, uh, you know, I'm a believer, I'm like, all right, well, whatever a sepsis is, I'm like, all right, God, you got it because you're bigger than whatever the diagnosis is. And, and I didn't know like people died from sepsis and stuff like that. So, uh, so I'm in the hospital, get home, uh, have a couple setbacks. And so now I end up having to have some surgery and blah, 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 and have some wound care. And I will testify that I've had, and I'm doing really, really good and just about done now, um, but I've had the same home care nurse for the last year. And the significance of that is, I can't put it into words, the familiarity. They know you, you know them, you have conversations, all the things that Lucette's talking about, I have experienced. I didn't know she'd be on here. She didn't know I'd be on here either. But I want to, for whoever's listening, to understand the significance of that. And that you, if you have an opportunity, well, I don't know if that's an opportunity or not. <laughs> <laughs> but if your situation, if life puts a demand on you that you need to have some assistance and it's some home, home health nurses can come and you can get a common one, or get a, one that can, or, or two that are there regularly for you, it makes an absolutely, it makes all the difference in the world. And, and I mean that, having experienced that. So I wanted to make sure to give a shout out uh for the concierge nurse business and you all who are listening uh if you don't know you may know someone else whatever hit her up and 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 encourage her because the work that you're doing is impactful and you may not hear it all the time but i'm here to tell you that it's impactful so uh wanted to do that what am i supposed to do now <laughs> so, my name is david cooks i'm uh, from milwaukee wisconsin and uh, I am a speaker, an author, a business coach, and a podcast host. How about that? Um, we'll, we'll try to touch on some of these things. Um, I wrote a book called Getting Undressed from Paralysis to Purpose. It's an award-winning book. I wrote it, uh, released it a couple of years ago now. And it's my memoir. Uh, it's my journey from, at age 15, experience of spinal aneurysm, which is a blood vessel that erupts on your spine um, when I was 15 years old. Woke up uh, on October 19th of 1979. Yeah, I'm a lot older than you think. I look really good though. And, um, <laughs> and within 24 hours, I was in a wheelchair. Uh, believing God through all of it, as I always do. Uh, but some four decades later, later um, I realized it was time for me to share the story with the world. And so I left, uh, I have an MBA. 
I have an undergrad in finance. I have an MBA from Duke University. Um, I did some corporate things, but I left there in 19, probably 1993 was the last time I had a corporate job, 95. Uh, and I left that because I had this tug in my heart to coach and to work with young people. And so I did that at the cost of a 70% pay cut uh, and took a, lived on campus in the Northeast in Connecticut and uh, began my journey uh, to fulfilling the purpose that I believe God had placed me here to do. Um, on that journey, you know, we talk about sacrifice and, and the things that it takes for you to be successful. Um, the amount that you're willing to sacrifice is, is an indication of the value of where you're going. And so uh, I knew I was giving up a lot, but I knew I had a lot to gain. And in doing so, um, I've been in the coach basketball. I had a love for the game since I was a young kid. I did that when I was at Duke, getting my MBA, which is a whole nother podcast slash story slash interview. Um, and um, just began to do that. Uh, I moved back to Wisconsin and uh, almost 20 years ago now, a little over 20 years ago, and I began uh, teaching at my alma mater, which was great. Uh, taught there, coached there, uh, taught economics, did some diversity work, uh, worked with some at-risk students, um, loved it, you know, and, um, but there came a point in time when that assignment was up and I was like, what do I do next? And um, I remember telling my wife, I'm like, you know what? I think my assignment is up, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do next, but I think I'm supposed to be a speaker and write a book. And uh, she was like, all right, you know, do your thing. I said, yes. <laughs> and so, um, so I ended up uh, leaving uh, the teaching profession, the education world in 2016. Um, I wrote a book and I said, it's called Getting Undressed from Paralysis to Purpose. And it really is a book to encourage people um, because life is going to give you something that you're going to have to deal with at some point. Uh, it may not be paralysis physically, it can be psychologically, it can be financially, it can be a number of things, but whatever it is, you've got to figure out how to add that to your recipe of success. And that's what I've learned how to do is how to take whatever it is, find the good in it, put it in my recipe and then make it beneficial for me. And I think that's what the book does. It talks about faith. It talks about disappointments. I've been fired before. I've been hired before. I've been told no before. I've been told yes before. All of that is a part of life uh, that I try to share with people. Um, so as I was preparing to write this book, uh, I, was, uh, I was flying to Boston and it was in, in December of 2016. Um, I believe, yeah, that's right. And, and it was for my first really big speaking gig. I just got hired by a speakers bureau. They saw something on Facebook that I thought was garbage, but they thought it was really good. That's a whole nother podcast story. Uh, <laughs> but I was on my way <clears throat> and midway through that flight, I began to have breathing issues and I didn't know what was going on. And so the, the stewardess um, asked me if I wanted some oxygen. And I said, absolutely, oxygen has never killed anybody. So give me the oxygen, I'll take it. I took that oxygen and I told them, I said, look, I've got two hours between when I land and when I'm supposed to speak. So I have the EMT ready and get me over to the emergency room so I can get this virus or whatever this thing is taken care of. Well, that turned out to be submassive blood clots in my lungs. Mm, yeah, that's a wow. <laughs> and so, uh, so I was like, okay, uh, I'm in ER. And they said, well, you're not going anywhere. And I said, uh, what do you mean? And they said, well, you know, you have submassive blood clots. You need to stay here and we need to take care of this. Well, I ended up staying there, getting that done. It happened to be at UMass, uh, Massachusetts General Hospital, which was the number one hospital in the world for treating the exact massive, submassive blood clots that I had. I will go and I'll just say that and move on. And so I ended up leaving there. I remember being there in the hospital and the doctor saying to me, I was in ICU because they had no beds and I'm getting great care. I was, I was good, but I was soaking all that up. I, I told them I couldn't do anything. <laughs> and so uh, um, while I'm there, some of my former students had become doctors and they had heard I was in the hospital. And so they began to tell some of the other people there about my story. And the doctors were coming in asking like, where's your book? And I was like, 
where's my book? You know, you're talking to me in the ICU. And they kept, and other doctors kept saying, where's your book? So I said, you know what? When I get back home, I'm going to cancel whatever I had, and I'm going to focus on writing this book. And I tell that story because I was clearly on my path to purpose. I was just out of order in that purpose. I was to complete the book and then begin the speaking. So I shut things down, uh, spent the next year or so writing the book, getting it done, uh, and then began speaking. Um, I talk a lot about teamwork. I talk about how to build winning cultures. Uh, obviously, I talk about how to overcome obstacles. I tell my, share my story as a backdrop to these things. Um, and, and clearly, um, because I'm African-American and in a wheelchair, I check off two boxes for most people. I know people don't, I'm not supposed to say that, but I ain't scared of nobody listening. That's just the truth. And so, so, so I leverage, let me tell you something. I've learned how to leverage being the only one. I don't count that as a, I don't take that as something as a disadvantage or any of that. I leverage it and then I try to bring somebody behind me that can come after me. And so whether it's disability awareness stuff or issues with African-American communities, uh, and I have varying views on all of that, but they're my view. And uh, that's what I, I love to do. Um, I recently um, launched my podcast. The podcast is called Paralysis to Purpose. Um, and it's a podcast. We are going to release our third episode uh, this Tuesday. Right now we're doing every other week. Uh, I've got a number of uh, episodes already recorded and in the bin. And we're just figuring out how to package things to try to get a sponsor and that kind of stuff. But the podcast itself features people who have stories that will inspire and motivate you. And they are all over the map. Some people have blue checks by their name and some don't. And um, I'm excited. I've spoken to people in Africa, Australia, United States. So this is a global thing now. And I'm so excited um, to put this out for people to enjoy. So if you get a chance, there, there's a website called paralysis, the number two purpose.com, which is the is the podcast website. And then my own website is davidcookspeaks.com. And that's where you can find out uh, where my book is and how to book me for a conference or meeting, virtual or live, uh, as long as live is safe. But it, as soon as live is unsafe, we're gonna do right back on this thing right here. Uh, <laughs> so just make that clear. Um, so that's really, who I am and what I do. I love the game of basketball. Like I said, I coached it nearly 30 years and have uh, been at various levels. Um, I stopped doing that in 2000 and uh, 18 was my last year. I was an assistant coach at a local division three college here. Um, and I don't, I don't miss that because that assignment also was up. And it's this, when you know that your assignment is up, there is no looking back. You're so, I'm so focused into what I'm doing now that I don't have time to think about what I was doing or am not doing. I, I just don't have the kind of time. Um, so that's, that's who I am, uh, what I do. And I'm open to questions, comments, whatever you may have. Well, now um, I have a, I have a, um, a thought. Um, one of, one of the other things that God told me a long time ago that he, that you cut and build it is what God uses. Sometimes we go through things in life that God uses, although it may be broken people or broken life, God uses them to bring change and, and to bring healing. And I believe that your story and your life is a testimony of that, that you bring healing to, to those people who may feel paralyzed, maybe they're paralyzed here, mm -hmm. paralyzed mentally, paralyzed emotionally, paralyzed, you know, in many different aspects of their life. For example, like in my life, I found that um, I allowed myself to be paralyzed when it came to um, to speaking because I grew up with a speech um speech um what impediment, and for a long time I allowed that to paralyze me. So sometimes we can be our own own um downfall. We can be the one that holds us back from moving forward. So I'm glad that you decided that I'm not gonna let being paralyzed hinder my purpose. And sometimes you're, you know, you can be 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 dealing with something here, 
but God still wants you to focus on your purpose. God will use you in spite of your purpose and in spite of your pain. And sometimes that can be a, tr well, a tricky thing for people because some people don't get there right away. Sometimes the journey is tough. Sometimes the journey gets hard because you know how to, to maneuver life. Because sometimes things happen and you're like, okay, God, what is left? Why? Why me? Yep. Then God would ask, why not me? Right. Why not? Can I add something to this uh, really quick? Um, and, I, and you're absolutely correct. I think that um, for me, it had been a journey also. Um, when I became a wheelchair user in 1979, I believe, I believe God would heal me then. I believe God will heal me now. So that hasn't changed in terms of my mindset. What had changed is my ability to be comfortable enough with who I am in my current situation to share that with other people, knowing that it's just as powerful as a healing because through what I've been through and through my message, it does bring healing to where people are in their life, in their businesses, whether that's telling a CEO, you know, how to, to get his employees to be more uh, productive, or if it's just going to uh, a rehab where guys have just got, uh, were victims of, of gunshot wounds, where I can talk to them about, okay, yeah, it's bad and I need you to grieve, but I need you to wipe them tears, all right, because we got stuff to do, you're still living. And so you're absolutely right that um, I'm a big believer in um, a couple of things. There's a, there's a phrase that I've trademarked. I need to get it on a shirt soon. <laughs> it's called, it says that your ability to endure is always greater than your willingness to endure. And I end every podcast with that because I think people don't understand that you have the ability to handle what you have. You can't handle what you see someone else have. You'd be right. like, there are things that I deal with people. I'm like, man, I don't know how they do that. And they're like, yo, man, how, you, how, what do you mean you don't know how they do that? And I'm like, I don't know how they do that because I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could handle their thing. And they look at me like, but you handle your thing. But I am graced to handle what I have because my ability to endure is always greater than my willingness to endure. I don't know anybody that's listening that wants to deal with stress, strife, trouble, tragedy, trauma. You know, you know anybody that volunteers for that, let me know, because I'll put them in my coaching class and we can try to help them with that. Uh, but I don't think that's the case. But that being said, the other thing I love to tell people, as long as there is time on the clock, you can impact the game. Not just be a player in the game, but you can impact the game. And that thing that was meant to be a flagrant foul to keep you from scoring will create scoring opportunities for you going forward. If you understand that, uh, that it hurt, but you got to the free throw line, you got two free shots and you got the come ball. Come on, basketball analogy, come on, come on. Are you serious? Come on, basketball you know, analogy, so, come on. And so, and so all of that becomes important, um, even in this pandemic, you know, as, as crazy as it's been and we've got all had to, do something in basketball that we call pivot before it became a positive word. A pivot is about your footwork, your ability to move in and out and become defenseless if your footwork is good. And so as a, as a business, as a person striving, if your feet are good, if you can maneuver and pivot, you, you become stopless. You become stopless. The only thing that stops you is you. I tell people that all the time. Excuses don't stop you. Racism doesn't stop you. Institutions don't stop you. You stop you. And if you do that, then it's on you. I know that may not be popular, but it's just the truth. It's true. It's true. And you know, when you were talking about, um, you know, your ability to withstand is greater than your um, willingness to withstand. You know, I always say that you, when God gives you something, we hear it all the time. If he brings you to it, he'll bring you through it. But we say that very haphazardly or whatever we just, but there's so much truth in that. You know, if we're willing to withstand, we will find that we're able, you know, we have the ability to withstand mm -hmm. because like you said, all of us, you know, we have gone through 100% of our bad days, right? And we're still here. Now, it's not to say that tomorrow is not going to have its challenges, but just like today, we're going to get through them, <laughs> you know? And a lot of people, I would just want to say, a lot of people may look at you and say, um, you know, sometimes they, before they know your story, there's this pity party that happens automatically. Like, oh, I'll give you an example. My daughter, every time we go out to eat, she's 16, you guys, and she has a heart as big as gold and as pure as gold. But she always goes, oh, that old person is sitting by themselves. 
And I go, she goes, I just want to go over and sit with him. I said, baby, sometimes people like sitting with themselves. This could have been a choice of that person. I liked it. And she's like, but that's just a sad life to live. And I'm like, you're having a pity party for somebody that's not having a pity party for themselves. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) why don't you have that conversation? But you have done, you know, without um, the ability to walk and do all those, you have been in the game. You have been able to do things that people have only dreamed of. Yeah, and, and 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 let's let's just make it real clear. Mm-hmm. Um, there are days I don't feel like doing this. Okay, I mean that's, I mean this last year on bed rest and all that crazy stuff. I ain't never been like that. I've been moving and going and everything, so I had to deal with fighting depression and fighting like all these questions in your mind um, when when you're isolated and by yourself. So I I get it. I've had surgery and all that kind of crazy stuff, and I so. The, it's nothing wrong with having those moments. And again, the key word is moments of like, you know what, I don't think I'm, I'm I, you know, I ain't trying to check out. I just want to have a timeout. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, and so that's just real. And I think one of the things that you did say was, that's, that's interesting is um, to allow for people to have their space. Um, and so they can figure out who they are and what's important to them and always be prepared though, to have compassion on people. Always be prepared to be compassionate, always. I'd rather have you air. People try to, and look, the older I get, the, the more I'm like, oh, you wanna hold that door? Absolutely, hold that door. You wanna, you wanna take my groceries to the trunk? Absolutely. Um, because I learned that I was shortchanging people's opportunity for a blessing when I refused their kindness because I thought I didn't need it. Because sometimes it's not about needing it, it's about receiving it so someone else can be blessed. And it took me a while to pick that up too. I mean, um, I mean, I used to be, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. And I was like, you know what? Let me let, me let these people bless me because it's gonna come back to them. And, and that's also part of that process. You know, I, it's, a, it's been a journey for me, you know, and I'm still on that journey. Um, but the, I just think that if you pay attention to the interruptions in your life, Mm-hmm. They're probably trying to tell you something. Pay attention to them. Stop. Sit in that interruption for a moment. Reflect and see what it's, what it's telling you because it's trying to get your attention about something. Mm-hmm. And um, you ask about how can you keep going and how do you um, take these phrases of, you know, all things work together for those and all, you know, all this stuff that we like to quote when we don't have no experiences. See, when you start to have experiences, you've got to figure out if that is true or not. And how do you make that happen? That's just the reality of it. That is the reality. That's the word. Y'all got a whole word today. Okay. Because <laughs> even in the times when we don't want to, you know, right before this, this uh, show, you know, I was tired. I was saying Saturdays for me are go, go, go from learning in the morning mastermind groups I have on Saturdays. And then I go into my own podcast and sometimes I have another one and then another event. And today I was, I was tired, but you know, you have to say I'm tired, but I have the ability to make a difference in somebody's life. Am I going to let my tire, I can go to sleep after this because this is the last event for me today, you know, (laughs) but a lot of people, if I didn't show up, you know, Matthew didn't show up, there'd be some people who missed out on the gifts that you guys have, the the things that you have that impact others. David speaks and uh, Lucetta's are in service that people are in need of. It's a blessing to be a blessing and you can't take that lightly at all at all. So David, where can people find you? I know that you said David Cook Speaks, but people are asking about your book, Okay, uh, where they can find your book. Yes. There's a couple of ways to do it. If, if you would like an autographed copy that I will personally sign for you, it's not a little sticker put in there because I don't believe in that. Um, you can go to my website, which is davidcookspeaks.com um, and you can order it from there. Or you could um, hit me on Venmo Okay. Um, shoot, I forget my thing for Venmo, but I got a Venmo and just put in their autograph book with your address. Um, it's also available on Amazon. Uh, you can get it there. Uh, again, I won't be signing that. Um, and that's okay. So that's where you get my book. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, and it's at DCE Speaks. Um, and that's for all of those platforms. And I also have an Instagram, Facebook, and 
um, Twitter page for paralysis to purpose.com, the podcast. So I'm, I'm on LinkedIn, um, Google me, <laughs> you know, all of that. I never thought I'd be saying, telling people just Google me. You know, I never thought I'd be saying that. Okay. That's what you, uh, made, so, you made it somewhere, right? Google me. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so that's how you do it. If you want the book, uh, go to my website, davidcookspeaks.com. And the first drag down thing you see, I, that's probably not the right word for it, but that's what I call it. Drop the down. drop down yeah. um, is how to secure a book. And uh, you get that to me. I just ordered some more because I, I literally uh, mailed out my last one. I don't keep a lot of inventory here because I'm a businessman. I understand inventory is, if it's not moving, it becomes an expense to me. Yeah. Um, how about that? Uh, another class, that, but that's a different class. If you want to know about that, you can <laughs> sign up for some coaching. Um, there so, we go. So, so last that, thing. That's oh, how they get to me. Okay. Um, Matthew, I don't know if you have any last words. I was just going to ask him to give us some words of encouragement, even though he's given us a whole message today already. <laughs> but we appreciate it. I looked into his story. I went on the website and saw little video clips and things like that. And um, his story is amazing. So um, what Lucette is doing is amazing. I encourage you guys to go on their websites to book services, to find out, to share with other people. You know, our gifts are not for us. They are to be given mm -hmm. to other people to help impact and change other people's lives. You never know whose life you will save by sharing Lucette's information. Um, she might be that person that just knows exactly what's going on with that person so this is not just some play play business this is about real business right here okay um and, you know encouraging people you know like he said a, a testimony to what home care nurses can do for a person you know he's here speaking to us because there was a home care nurse who was attentive to his needs for the last year when he had sepsis um i've had people that dealt with that so i know what that's like um so Again, you guys, please share this. Don't keep it to yourself. Um, and then the other thing is, okay, David, I'm gonna let you get before we close out. So <laughs> last words of um, advice, of encouragement, of inspiration, whatever you wanna say uh, to the audience. I will, I, will, I, will, I will simply say this. Your story is the most powerful thing you have. Make sure you share it. Yes. Your story is a gift. It is a gift. Life is a gift. I have... Um... I have one more question from from Lutet. Do you just deal with with just um, New Jersey, or you go to different states? And are you just stationed in one state or in in several areas? How do you do you do your work? Are you just in New Jersey, or are you in New York, no Florida? No. How does your business work? Okay, good question. So I service New York and Long Island. Um, as far as New Jersey, because nursing is a license-based um, service, so I have to be licensed in other states to practice. So I've just applied for, for New Jersey. Um, I'm trying to focus on the, the tri-state right now, and then um, hopefully I can see about the other states. But for now, I'm just, just trying to be as close to patients as possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. I just do want to say something else before um, I am <laughs> like I, I really enjoy this conversation. Um, I admire you, David, because um, I've met so many, you know, uh, patients over the, uh, you know, my years of nursing that may have been in uh, the same, you know, have been paralyzed or in the uh, same situation as, as you um, and you it's a lot you know, it's a lot you have to go through. Um, I know physically and mentally and emotionally. And I do commend you because um, it is it's inspiration for me because I'm like, wow, like you're to me, I'm like, you're in a book, you're speaking, you podcast. Like there's some days I just feel like I'm so exhausted. I don't feel like doing it. But when I hear stories similar to uh, David, I see even you, David, doing what you're doing, it's like, what I have no, I really have no excuse. I have no excuse, but it's at the end of the day, it's all a mind. It's all in your mind, it's your mindset, um, you know, and you know, you have people that will and you have people that won't. To me, those are the two type of people in this world, you know? So um, I really commend you, David, and it, it's amazing to see what you're doing. It is. Well, thank you. And what you're doing is, is just on the same level. So don't, uh, yeah. you know, you. My, I tell people, you know, my 
my life, my life's issues are visible for you. So it makes it easier for you to be inspired by them or motivated, motivated by them. But it's the invisible ones that really make it a challenge that no one can see and they can't give you an add a boy or add a girl. And like you said, it becomes your mind. It becomes what you think. And it's important to uh, manage that and manage your mind well. This is the largest piece of real estate and the most important piece of real estate and the most expensive piece of real estate in the world. And I manage it really well. I manage what goes in, what comes out, what I think, what I see. It does make a difference. And so, uh, Lucette, you're doing great. You're doing, you're doing great work. And, I, and you know what? We can't grow weary in well-doing, for we shall reap if we faint not. And that doesn't mean you won't get tired. Faint not means to fall back and turn away. We're not going to do that. We're just not going to do that. Y'all hitting us with the word today. Hitting us with the word. I love it. Um, but we've had two amazing guests today yeah. with us. Thank you for sharing your stories. Thank you for sharing your passions. Um, both of them, not only, you know, I would say in the, in the medical field, <laughs> you know, in one way or another, um, but they both, if you heard them talking, talking about what a mindset shift will do for your life. Um, David Cooks, he's a coach as well. So if you're wondering how he's so strong, get on his website. He can coach you through some things, I'm sure. You know, he coached basketball. He's a, a coach. He's a speaker coach. He, he talks to kids. He does all these things. Lucette can help you figure out what you need to do to take the step, you know, leap of faith to start your own home care business if that's what you choose to do. So both of these, even though they never met, you know, we didn't know necessarily, you know, what the connection would be is one of those things that you can just say is an, a divine appointment. <laughs> you know, it was a reason why that they were on here together today. So anyway, I just want to say thank you guys for your time. Thank you for your passion. Thank you for sharing your stories. And I wish you both the best. Before we leave on here, we do this every month. We highlight small businesses every single month in the Taking Care of Our Mental Health group. So please share this if you want anybody. We, we do different things. We have a lot of stuff coming up. We have a scholarship fund that we're giving people who are going into like uh, mental health fields and things like that. Um, helping them to get their education by giving them uh, scholarships. Uh, we're also writing a book. We're co-writing a book as the admins called Taking Care of Our Mental Health from a Christian Perspective. So we'll be talking about various, and there are seven authors in there. Um, Matthew is one of them, myself, Fran Sampson, who is the founder of the Taking Care of Our Mental Health, Sunita Wandu Frank, uh, Sylvia Bounet, uh, Pastor Robert Ferrer, and then also Pastor Heather Barfield. So um, that will be coming out soon, hopefully by the end of the this year. Um, so we are doing some things uh, in this community to really address the issues that we go through and also to help and support and encourage each other through as well. So if you want to be highlighted, you know somebody who's worthy of being highlighted, who has you know aspirations, whether we've had young writers on here, poets, we've had artists, we've had financial advisors, we've had some of everybody. So it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're starting a small business and you're trying to get off your feet, you want exposure, please, we will do our part, but you have to do your part in contacting us, all right? And letting us know that you're out there and you wanna be highlighted. So uh, Matthew, before I close, uh, do you want to have any parting words? Sure, sure. First, I wanna thank Lutet and David for joining us. Thank you for, for um, giving us your time because I know Saturdays are pretty busy when you got kids or family. And I know um, it can be difficult to set aside time. So I thank you for telling us your story. And it was a pleasure to have you guys on, be able to share. And that's what we want to do. We want to be able to help um, small businesses and people who have goals and dreams that they're trying to put out there. We want to bring them on to be able to share. So thank you for joining us. That's all. Thank you. Oh, and before, when we're talking about sharing stories, I'm also doing a, um, a workshop next month. It's a four-week workshop, head to hand, how to get your story, the develop the idea from your head, get it from your head into your hand, uh, a published book. So um, I am doing that. I'll share that in the group as well. So if you have a story that you've been sitting on for years, or you have this burning idea or passion, you say, I want to write a story, I will help you through the mechanics of getting it out of your head. 
and into your hands. So uh, we appreciate your time. We appreciate your efforts. We appreciate you guys just spending this time and for sharing your stories. And so you all be blessed. And until next time, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.